morning. The past few lectures we have been discussing the thermal history of the universe and uh, in this discussion in this discussion we have uh, considered the electron positron pairs the uh, neutrinos and the photons and uh, the discussion starts at somewhere around 10 to the power 11 kel kelvin and it is valid all the way to roughly around 10 to the power 4 kelvin. So, we start off with the fluid which has all of these in equilibrium and at the end these annihilate and we are left with only neutrinos and photons. Now, <coughs> this discussion does not we have ignored the baryons and the after the electron positron annihilate we have also ignored the excess electrons that are left over. So, in today's lecture we are going to mainly focus on what happens to these small amounts of baryons which were we know are present and the small amount of electrons which we also know survive the electron positron annihilation the excess electrons. And uh, <coughs> this is what gives rise to what is called the cosmological nucleosynthesis. So, we are going to now <coughs> consider the what happens to the baryons. They were if you go sufficiently back in the past where the temperature is comparable to the baryon temperature you know, baryon masses comparable to the mass of the neutron and proton then you have baryon anti baryon production, but the temperatures we are dealing with 10 to the power 11 Kelvin are much smaller than that. So, baryons anti baryons just like the positron electrons got annihilated much earlier and some there is an excess amount of baryons because what we see around us are all baryons this pen for example or everything the oxygen is all made up of neutrons and protons. So, there is some excess baryon that survives and uh, it is really insignificant we have calculated the ratio of the baryon to the photon number density the entropy content everything the baryon the content in the baryon is really insignificant, but it plays an important role and this is what we are going to discuss now. Okay. There is also an equal number of electrons which survive because we know the universe is charge neutral. So, when there is electron positron annihilation some electron there is an excess slight excess of electrons again that is really insignificant compared to the numbers that were present when they were in electron positron pairs were in equilibrium, but this small amount that exists that excess is what you see in all the material around us. Okay. So, what happens to this baryons now the baryons. <coughs> uh, so, we are going to now be discussing at uh, we start our discussion at temperatures greater than 10 to the power 10 Kelvin okay, somewhere over there we shall come back to this point later. Now, these baryons that we are dealing with are neutrons and protons and neutrons and protons can <coughs> are can get converted back and forth between this. So, there is a these neutrons can convert to proton and protons can convert to neutrons through the weak interaction. So, there are several reactions let me write them down. So, these reactions <coughs> so one of these let me write down these reactions there is a reaction where the neutron can capture a neutrino and <coughs> become a proton plus an electron. Okay. The baryon number is conserved, <coughs> there is one baryon here, one baryon here, the lepton number is also conserved, there is 
a neutrino here and there is an electron here. Okay. Now, you have another reaction where the neut neutron captures a positron and becomes a proton and there is an anti neutrino emitted. Okay. So, here again the baryon number is conserved charge also is conserved you can check this is positive this also is positive same positive charge. Here the neutron and a positron they combine to give a proton and an anti neutrino. So, here this is an anti lepton and anti lepton okay. and a neutron these all these reactions the reverse can also occur. So, you have this and the neutron can also decay to give you a proton and electron and an anti neutrino. Okay. Again this the lepton number baryon number everything is conserved. Now, in these reactions the neutrino that we are referring to is the electron neutrino. Okay. The other flavors the mu neutrino and tau neutrino do not play any role in these reactions. So, the neutrons and protons they can get in interconverted these are the baryons they can get interconverted through these reactions and uh, <coughs> the temperatures that we are dealing with the temperatures are of the order of 10 to the power 10 Kelvin somewhat more than 10 to the power 10 Kelvin and less. At these temperatures you can think of the neutrons and protons as effectively being at rest. The temperatures are much smaller than the rest mass energy uh, smaller considerably smaller than the rest mass energy of neutrons and protons. So, you can <coughs> consider these as being at rest. So, now if you balance the energy of uh, of these reactions then E nu E electron the energy of the electron minus energy of the neutrino is equal to Q where Q is the mass difference. So, you see the proton has a lesser mass compared to the neutrinos. The proton mass is less than that of the neutrino. So, there is a difference in energy this mass difference also gives rise to a difference in energy. The proton mass is lower. Okay. So, there is a difference in mass between the proton and the neutron So, this mass difference goes into the energies of the particles that are emitted. Okay. So, since the neutron gives rise to a proton over here, the energy has gone down, energy of the proton is lower. So, the difference in energy has to be in the difference in the kinetic energies of these particles, okay, in the energies of these particles. This is also okay. So, for this reaction, we have for the first reaction, we have this for the this is for the first reaction, for the second reaction, similarly, and for the third reaction, you can write down right. For the second reaction, it will be E energy of the neutrino minus energy of the positron, this will be equal to Q. This is for the second one, and for the third one the sum of these two energies is going to be equal to q right so you can write down write all of these down these these down and the value of q the difference the mass difference is 1.293 mev okay so in summary you can have conversion of neutrons. So, neutrons and protons are the baryons that we are discussing 
and you can have a conversion from neutron to proton and back to these reactions. The proton mass is somewhat less than the neutron mass and this mass difference will be converted into the energy of the particles that are in other particles that are involved in this reaction at the temperatures which we are discussing it will the difference in energy will go into the other particles and the mass difference is 1.293 mega electron volts MeV. Okay, so, the proton is a slightly lower mass baryon as compared to the neutron. Now, what we would like to we, what we are going to discuss is essentially the, the, the rate of conversion of neutron to proton and proton to neutron. So, the reaction rate let me write down the reaction rates for these two reactions. So, the, for these reactions okay, so the reactions we are talking about are neutron going to proton, proton going to neutron okay, and it can happen by these three possibilities. So, the uh, reaction rate for neutron going to proton this is going to be denoted uh, by lambda neutron to proton and uh, this is equal to constant A which I shall tell you what it is shortly into an integral and the integral has a factor 1 minus the mass of the electron square divided by q plus small q. This q is the q that we had just introduced, it is the energy difference between the this whole thing to the power of half. So, there is this factor over here and then you have this multiplied by q plus q square q square d q 1 minus e to the power q by k b t neutrino 1 minus e to the power minus q plus q by k b t. Okay. So, <coughs> this integral will give you the reaction rate from neutron to proton. The integral is over q over the variable q and uh, <coughs> q runs from minus infinity to plus infinity. You have to leave out <coughs> a part, the part that you have to leave out in this integral is where this becomes negative because if this is negative the square root cannot be taken it cannot be a real number then. So, one has to leave out the part where uh, <coughs> this uh, this this is negative and uh, that part <coughs> is uh, q equal to minus q minus m e. There are factors of c square which have been not put here explicitly these small q capital Q there should be a factor of c square here which have which has not been written. So, the place where I have taken this expression from they assume that c is 1 okay, the speed of they work in units where the speed of light is 1. Okay, so, if you are working in units where the speed of light is not 1 then you have to put in appropriate powers of c square. Okay, this is energy so the mass has to be converted to energy you have to put in c square that is obvious. Okay, so, you have to leave out the range from this integral from this value to this value. In this range <coughs> this uh, argument becomes negative and you cannot evaluate it. Okay. Now, so there is a constant over here there are two different temperatures that occur in this expression 
one is the temperature of the CMBR which is also the temperature of the electrons and the other is the temperature of the neutrinos. Okay, T nu. Now, <coughs> let me just very briefly give you an idea how you get how you get this expression. What what are the things that are there in this expression? So this expression is <coughs> essential is the reaction rate for neutri neutrons to get converted to protons through these three reactions. These are all mediated through the weak interaction. Okay, this is something that I should tell you. Okay, this is essentially beta decay. Right? These are all mediated. Beta decay is something just like this. So these are all mediated through the weak interaction. Now we want to calculate the rate. So this is the combined rate of these reactions together. Okay. Now what is it that contributes to these reaction rates? Let me just give you a brief idea. So, the first thing that contributes is the weak interaction scattering cross section. Okay. So, there is the weak interaction <coughs> weak interaction scattering cross section. Okay, these reactions are weak interaction and uh, the weak interaction scattering cross section. So, the scattering cross section is what comes in and that is there in the factor A outside. Okay, let me write down what the fat factor A is. So, A is G weak square 1 plus 3 G A. Uh, there is a square over here 1 plus g a square into cos square theta c divided by 2 pi cube h cross. Okay. <coughs> so, the weak interaction the scattering cross section is there in this. What are these factors g w k is the weak interaction this has a value which is 1.16 into 10 to the power minus 5 GeV square and uh, this is the <coughs> weak interaction coupling constant just like you have a gravitational coupling constant capital G this is the weak that's this is the weak interaction coupling constant. Then you have G A and uh, this has a value one point uh, two five seven and uh, this is the coupling to the uh, axial vector. So, this is the axial vector coupling and theta c there is a cos square theta c over here theta c is 0 0.9745 and uh, this is called the kabibo angle okay so you put in all of these factors and you can calculate this constant a which is related to the scattering weak interaction scattering cross section so, if there were one reaction to take place, if you would, if you were to send one uh, electron, so one of the, any one of these reactions, so for any one of these reactions, if you were to send one neutron, neutrino onto a neutron, then what is the probability that it would, this reaction would occur? Okay, so th there is a, you can, that is given by the scattering cross section, it has dimension of area. Okay, so that is this there in this factor A. 
Now, it is not that there is one neutrino which is impinging on a neutron. You have a whole thermal distribution of neutrinos at a temperature T nu. Right. At any temperature, this is the thermal history that we have been discussing. At any temperature, there is a thermal distribution of neutrinos. So, there are neutrinos with all different kinds of momentum, different kinds of energy which are impinging on this neutron. Because the neutron is not placed in vacuum or with one neutrino, it is placed in this thermal distribution of neutrinos. So, we want to calculate the total conversion rate. So, we have to take into account all possible neutrinos with all possible energies impinging on this. Right. So, that is why you have this you have this integral which has factors that look like just like the Fermi Dirac bosine these distributions. Okay. There is also another thing there is the Pauli exclusion principle that has to be taken into account. The electron that is produced is not produced into vacuum. The electron will be produced with some momentum and energy into a region where there are already electrons existing and these electrons are at a temperature T. Electron positron annihilation has possibly uh, you can have it, you can work before that or after that whatever it is there will there are already certain electrons with certain distribution. right? So, you cannot produce electrons with exactly the same state as that that is Pauli exclusion principle. So, those states have to be excluded. So, you have to also take into account that and all of that has gone in <coughs> to this expression and uh, that is what gives you this integral. The integral is over all the possible incoming states, outcome, outgoing states, etcetera. Okay. And it in incorporates the Pauli's exclusion principle. So, finally, you can have this reaction rate from neutrons to protons. Similarly, <coughs> you can also write down an expression for the reaction rate from protons to neutrons. Let me write this down also. So, the reaction rate from proton to neutron is again you have the same factor over here 1 minus m e square this is the mass of the electron square divided by q plus to the power half and then you have q plus q and here now you have 1 minus e to the power minus q by k b t neutrino 1 minus e to the power q plus q by q b t. Okay. So, the difference is that we have a negative sign here and a positive sign here in the other re reaction rate from neutron to proton you have a positive sign here and a negative sign here. Okay, that is the difference otherwise it is exactly the same. So, these expressions give us allow us to calculate the, uh, the rate of conversion from neutrons to protons and protons to neutrons. Okay. Now, <coughs> We are interested in following the neutron, the diffraction of uh, neutrons and protons. So, this is going to be governed by the equation. So, we are going to use x n to denote the neutron fraction. So, this is the fraction neutron divided by nucleons. that is neutrons plus protons. Okay, this is the neutron fraction and this is going to be governed by the equation So, there are two processes there is one process where the neutrons get converted to protons this is going to have a negative sign and this is going to be proportional to the reaction rate into the neutron fraction and there is going to be 
this is going to give rise to a depletion in the neutron fraction and there is the other reaction protons to neutrons and this is going to be proportional to the proton fraction. So, uh, in general what one will have to do is you will have to put in these reaction rates and uh, integrate this equation okay that is that is the uh, that is what one has to do. Now, <coughs> to to uh, to determine the neutron fraction at any given time. Now, what happens the next question is what happens if uh, the two temperatures are equal. Suppose the neutron neutrino temperature and the uh, CMBR temperature are the same and the whole thing is time independent. Okay. So, suppose the two <coughs> reaction rates are the suppose the two temperatures the temperature of the neutrino and the temperature of the of the uh, CMBR is the same and the whole thing is time independent that whole thing comes to equilibrium suppose you just have neutrons and protons then what is going to happen let us just see this first. Okay. So, if you have the temp so the so the temperature let us go back to our reaction or uh, to the react reactions. So, you have these reactions and uh, the question is what happens when uh, when these have the same thermal distribution what is what are the reaction rates what is what are the numbers. Okay. Now, you you can calculate the uh, the uh, reaction rates and So, this is quite you, you one would have expected it quite obvious that the uh, if the two temperatures of the neutrino and the CMBR are the same the electron temperature is the same if the whole thing is time independent then the the reaction rate would be such the uh, that it would come to equilibrium the whole thing would come to equilibrium and uh, x n by x p Okay. So, if if the two temperatures of the neutrino and the say of the electrons were the same and if the whole thing were time independent then the ratio of the neutrons to protons would be exactly given by exponential minus the energy difference by k b t this is what you would expect they would have the Boltzmann distribution you would have more protons and less neutrinos because the protons have a lesser energy and when the temperature becomes much larger compared to q then these two would be equal in number this ratio would <coughs> tend to 0 uh, this whole thing would would if t is much larger than k v t is much larger than q this would tend to 0 and you would have exact these would be same 
as the temperature approaches Q, the neutron number would fall relative to the proton number because the neutrons have a larger energy. You can think of them as two energy levels, the neutron being a slightly higher energy level than the protons. So, when the temperature falls below the energy level, the lower energy level is going to get populated more. You can think of this as two energy levels, the neutron and the proton. When the temperature is much larger than the energy difference, these are going to be equally populated. When the temperature falls below the energy difference, the neutrons are going to go over to the protons. Okay. So, this is what you have if these conditions hold. Okay. But this is not true, we have seen, we have already discussed <coughs> the thermal evolution and we see that after the positron electron annihilation, the neutrino temperature falls below the CMBR temperature. So, it also falls below the electron temperature. The electrons are in thermal equilibrium with the CMBR, they get scattered. So, this is the first thing. The second thing is the whole thing is also not time independent. Okay. So, one has to actually solve and obtain the neutron fraction. So, the question is how does one go about this? Now, at a sufficiently high temperature, so at a temperature of around 10 to the power 11 Kelvin, at a sufficiently high temperature, one may assume that the two temperatures are the same. Right? At 10 to the power 11, let us say Kelvin or some high temperature, one may assume that here, here the two temperatures are the same. Before electron positron annihilation, the temperature of the neutrino and the same are the same. And one may also assume that K B T is much larger than the energy, the energy difference. Okay. So, under these assumptions, under these assumptions, what you have is that <coughs> if you assume that Uh, that K B T is much larger than Q and both of them are the same. If you go back to the expressions for the, if you go back to these expressions, then what happens is that this term can be dropped. It is also, okay. so uh, we are also assuming Okay. So, what you have if in this assumption, you also assume that uh, this is also higher m e c square, you can also assume this m e essentially. Okay. So, then what you what you have is that you can evaluate those integrals for the reaction rates. You can set q equal to 0, also the m e c square equal to 0. Essentially, you can ignore these terms because the temperature is much higher than these and uh, then you can calculate the neutron to proton ratio, the reaction rate which turns out to be equal to the proton to neutron reaction rate and this turns out you can do the integral actually the integral what you get is that this turns out to be equal to 7 by 15 pi to the power 4 a k b t to the power 5. Okay, so, you can actually do the integral over here under this assumption. So, this term can be dropped, this q is not there. So, you have q to the power 4 over here, <coughs> this temperature and this temperature are exactly the same, this capital Q is 0. So, the integral that you get after that can be evaluated analytically and this is the answer that you get okay, with these simplifications. And if you put in the numbers for this what you get, 
is that the reaction rate is the reaction rate are given by this. Okay, if you put in the numbers for this, the reaction rates turn out to be this. Now, <coughs> to determine if the reaction is in thermal equilibrium, is in equilibrium, see there are, we are working in an, <coughs> so what are we doing? We want to now determine the starting value of the neutron fraction neutron fraction at a sufficiently high temperature of 10 to the power 11 somewhere over there. Okay. So, at these sufficiently high temperatures the, the temperature of the neutrino and the CMBR are the same the temperature of the neutrino and electron are the same. There is a further simplification that you may neglect Q not this is this temperature is equal okay. you may neglect Q you may neglect you may neglect M E C square. Okay. So, this is much greater than this, okay, not that this is much greater. I hope it is clear. This temperature is much greater than the mass difference, it is also much greater than M E C square, we are assuming. So, we can set these to two terms to 0, which simplifies the whole analysis and finally, you can calculate the reaction rate to be this. Okay. Now, we would like this is if you ignore we have ignored the expansion of the universe. There are two things that are happening. One is that the universe is expanding and the expansion of the universe moves the particles apart. There is also the reaction between the particles. right? Now, there are two rates for this. So, the rate, the ratio that we have to look at is lambda for let us say they are the same. So, neutron to proton and this is the rate at which the reaction is occurring and this is the rate of the expansion. If this ratio is more than 1, it tells us that the reaction rate is faster than the expansion. So, I can think of it as being a static at a, as a static process. So, the reaction occurs, the expansion can be ignored. Again, the temperature changes. So, I can think of holding the expansion the reaction occurs. Okay. Again, after some time the temperature has changed, but the reaction can be thought of as occurring on a time scale much faster than that. Okay. So, the expansion essentially does not matter, it still is in equilibrium. Okay. Whereas, if this ratio were less than 1, then the whole thing is out of equilibrium, it is not in equilibrium. Okay, so, I have to simultaneously then consider the expansion of the universe as well as the reaction. Okay. So, we would like to see if the if we would like to see if this is in equilibrium or not to start with at temperature of around at what to what temperature is it in equilibrium we could ask the question. So, the, the expansion in a radiation dominated era we have seen is equal to some constant t to the power half. We have worked this out explicitly in the last lecture. So, we can use this to calculate h, h then turns out to be a dot by a. So, if you do a dot by a, you will get 1 by 2 t. And in the last class, I had written down the expression for T at epochs before positron electron annihilation when the temperature of neutrino and same BR are the same. We had written down, we had worked this out, it, I had explained to you how this comes about. So, we had written this down, this is 0 0.994 second T by I had mistaken the written 10 to the power 11 here possibly in the last class. In case I have done that, please correct it. It should be 10 to the power 10 Kelvin to the power minus 2, right, 1 by t square. We had worked this out. So, 
which is so you can use this. So one can use this the reaction rate and the Hubble expansion rate here which is 1 by 2 t. So, one can use these two to estimate this ratio and so this ratio turns out to be approximately equal to 0 0.8. So, the reaction ratio the Right, you had 10 to the power 3 for one of them and you 10 to the power 5 and you had <coughs> 10, uh, 10 minus 2. So, if you take the inverse, so finally 2 powers cancel out and this is what you are left with. Okay, this is the ratio of the reaction rate to the expansion rate. So, what we see is that this is greater than 1 when the temperature is more than 1.1 into 10 to the power 10 Kelvin. Okay. Now, <coughs> the assumptions, the assumption that q that that uh, q equal to zero and t equal to t nu, these assumptions break down before this temperature. Okay, this assumption breaks down the moment po positron electron moment the neutrinos decouple essentially. Okay, we have discussed this and uh, this breaks down when the energy scale crosses the mass uh, the mass difference scale, but this gives a good. So, this analysis that we have done is strictly not valid till this temperature. It breaks down much earlier somewhat earlier, okay. but this gives us a good order of magnitude. This gives a good order of magnitude idea of the temperature scale till which the reaction is in equilibrium the reaction rate the reaction is in equilibrium okay so this gives us a good uh, feeling for the temperature scale when the reaction is in equilibrium <coughs> now when the reaction is in equilibrium when this reaction is in equilibrium the uh, the the rate at which neutrons are produced and the rate at which neutrons are destroyed these two rates actually balance each other so <coughs> the right hand side of the rate of the rate the right hand side of the rate <coughs> equation should cancel out <coughs> So, in thermal equilibrium the uh, terms on the right hand side should cancel out right because the rate at which neutrons are produced should be equal to balanced exactly by the rate at which they are destroyed. So, in thermal equilibrium the uh, the rate at which uh, neutrons are produced should balance out should cancel out d x n d t should be equal to 0. And what it tells us is that x n should be equal to lambda And at temperatures at uh, temperatures T greater than 10 to the power 10 Kelvin, the uh, T and uh, T neutrino they vary by roughly 1 per within 1 percent. Okay. The difference falls off. See we have calculated the ratio T neutrino by T. right? that ratio is not achieved immediately. We have assumed that it is as achieved instantaneously, 
the moment the proton uh, positron electron annihilate, but it uh, actually does not occur instantaneously. And uh, temperatures more than 10, kel 10 to the power 10 Kelvin, these two are actually <coughs> within 1 percent of each other. So, uh, at temperatures more than 3 into 10 to the power 10 Kelvin. we have x the neutron <coughs> fraction is 1 by 1 plus exponential q by k b t. <coughs> so, this sets the initial condition for the neutron fraction. So, the initial neutron to proton ratio is not assumed by hand. Okay. It is assumed based on the fact that they are in <coughs> thermal equilibrium, the whole thing is in equilibrium. And there is an assumption that has gone in though, which uh, I should make explicit. Beyond that assumption, this is uh, set uh, by thermal equilibrium, by equilibrium. So, the assumption that has gone in is that the lepton have no chemical, the chemical potential for the leptons is 0. For the neutrinos and <coughs> electrons, all the chemical potential is 0. Okay. Neutrinos, <coughs> the, the lepton chemical potential is 0, that is the assumption. Other than that, there is no other assumption. So, so the initial ratio, the neutron fraction, the proton neutron to proton ratio is set from by these considerations, considerations that I have uh, <coughs> just told you. Okay. So, you take what one does is one takes this initial condition and <coughs> one puts it in this equation, one explicitly calculates then the neutron, the, the, the reaction rates from neutron to proton, proton to neutron by doing those integrations at different temperature and then one solves this differential equation. Okay, obviously, we cannot do it analytically, it has to be done numerically. So, you put it in a computer, at each time step you, you evaluate that integral, get the temperature uh, for different temperature, the temperature changes. So, you evaluate the integral, how the temperature changes we have already discussed in the thermal history. So, for each time step, at each time interval step you evaluate those reaction rates and then you integrate this, move this forward once and again the temperature also changes. So, you again evaluate this. So, by this <coughs> you can calculate the neutron fraction as a function of the time or temperature. So, I am going to just show you these values, these values <coughs> have been tabulated here. This is <coughs> book <coughs> Weinberg's book on cosmology and uh, <coughs> let me show you the values of. So, this shows you the neutral the, the neutron fraction as a function of the uh, temperature and the time both. So, it starts at 10 to the power 12 Kelvin and then it does the evolves the differential equation, evaluating the reaction rates in between and the point. So, this, uh, this does not take into account the fact that there will be different complex nuclei. For, so, what we are interested actually is in nucleosynthesis. So, these neutrons and protons do not remain free particles. Once the temperature is sufficiently low, so that it is less than the binding energy of nuclei, nuclei start to form. Okay, at sufficiently high temperatures, the temperature is much higher than the binding energy of nuclei. So, these remain as free particles okay, because these nuclei will be broken, but once the temperature falls below the binding energy, nuclei will be formed. This does not take into account that it assumes that if you should treat that these remain as free particles and under that assumption, this <coughs> gives you the, the how the neutron fraction changes. So, the main point is that as the universe cools, as it expands, 
the neutron fraction drops. Okay, the neutron fraction drops. That's the main thing. If it had been in thermal equilibrium, then the drop would have been very easy to calculate. Right? It would have just been given <coughs> by this expression. Right? And <coughs> as the temperature gets lower and lower this term gets larger and larger. So, the neutron fraction keeps on falling it is essentially as I had told you it is like a two, two, two energy level system and once the temperature falls below the energy difference the lower state is going to get populated yeah, all neutrons are going to get converted to protons. Okay. But one has to do a better treatment because the whole thing the universe is expanding and also because there are two different temperatures after a certain time there are two different temperatures the neutrinos and the electrons have different temperatures. So, one has to take into account uh, both of these. <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> I have outlined to you how, how one can calculate this one has to do it finally, one has to do it numerically and I have shown you the values uh <coughs> of the for the neutron fraction. So, in tomorrow in the next lecture we shall discuss how nucleosynthesis occurs in this background.